Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing how your dumper could be chasing you soon. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. Check out my socials for extra content. The links are in the description. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing how your dumper could be chasing you soon. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you might not believe that things can turn around. In today's podcast, I'll be telling you three reasons why your expert dumper could be chasing you soon. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is feelings change. Now, if you consider the time before you had even met your ex, you would, of course, not have been thinking about them. And they would, of course, not been thinking about you. You never knew each other. You perhaps had a previous relationship. They perhaps had a previous relationship. Possibly you told someone previously in your life that you loved them. Maybe your ex dumper had a previous relationship and they told them that they loved them during that time as well. And then, of course, time moved on. Things changed. Feelings changed. You and your now ex met each other. And at first, you wouldn't have been in love. You just met each other. You had interactions. You got to know each other. Then... Those feelings started to develop and you did fall in love. You told each other you loved one another. Maybe you had children with each other. Maybe you got married to one another. You quite possibly lived with each other. And sadly now, your expert dumper decided to become your expert dumper. They actioned the breakup. They have told you no doubt. But unfortunately right now, they don't love you. Certainly not in a romantic way. You at this stage are heartbroken. But let's just look back at what we've just said. Let's look back at all of those elements. Before you knew your ex, you possibly loved someone else. Then you went through a phase of where probably you didn't love anybody at all. Then you met your ex and you got to know them. You didn't love them at that stage. But then eventually you got to the point where you did. What can we see through that? You loved, you stopped loving, you fell in love again. Right now, you're at that phase that perhaps you've been in previously. Maybe it stings more right now, but you've probably been here before to some degree, and your ex probably has as well. Or maybe the roles you're experiencing right now were reversed in the past, and this is new territory for you and your dumper. What we see here is that feelings change. If you got married, then on your wedding day, when you said, I do... I'm convinced you genuinely meant it. I'm convinced your expert dumper genuinely meant it. Lots of dumpees say to me, well, my ex could never have really loved me, but that's simply not true. Feelings change. Situations change. We are always evolving. We are always growing. But are we growing together or are we growing apart? What we see here is that feelings change from day to day in a smaller sense, week to week, a little bit more so, month to month getting bigger, year to year is getting more so and more so, where we can see differences in our evolution and our change and our growth. We are evolving all the time. Feelings change. But what does this mean for the future? Well, what it means is that your expert dumpers' feelings right now are not the feelings that they are going to have in the future. Maybe Those feelings will be somewhat similar tomorrow. Maybe they'll be still kind of the same next week. But when we get into next month, three months, six months, nine months, next year, what does that tell us? It tells us that their feelings are going to change, but they are going to evolve. Now, does it mean that they're going to be feeling somewhat similar towards you as they do right now? Well, that is what we can't say for certain. We can't say for certain how their feelings will change. But what we can say is they won't stand still because they never have before and they never will again. 
So even if you don't believe you can get your ex back, and even though I can't guarantee you will get your ex back, we can certainly see that it is possible. Because just as your ex dumper doesn't love you romantically right now, they did love you romantically in the past, and they could love you romantically in the future. Because those feelings will keep changing, evolving, and growing in different directions. And if they get to the same direction as you once more, this is when you two can be brought back together. I can't guarantee it, but what we can say is that their feelings will be different. I can guarantee that much. The way you feel about everything in your life right now is not going to be exactly the same in six months' time. Maybe you will still have the same core beliefs on things in that period of time. I can't say that you won't, but what I can say is that you won't be exactly the same. Feelings fluctuate, change, evolve. The way you feel about something you watch on TV in six months is likely to be different to how you feel right now. It might still be your favourite show, but you probably don't want to watch it every single day like you do right now. Your feelings change. They evolve. The way you think about your ex will change. Ironically, they might change towards wanting to reconnect with you, and you might change from no longer wanting to reconnect with them. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast. Please like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And point number two is different strategy, different results. So in today's podcast, we're speaking about how your expert dumper could be chasing you soon. And point number two is really highlighting the fact that if things aren't going the way you hope right now, then if you alter your strategy, you could get different results. Different strategy, different results. What we're talking about here is not necessarily a huge change. Maybe you just need to tweak your strategy. Now, depending on your specifics, will of course dictate what we mean right now. I don't know, of course, what your situation is unless we speak via my audio coaching service. I have to speak in a generalized sense. My audience demographics really showcase a wide range of people from 18 years of age into people in their 70s, both men and women. I can't predict exactly where you're at just in this generalized podcast, but what I can say is that tweaking your strategy is going to tweak your results, for good or for bad. You know, you might be doing things right and you kind of think, well, this isn't happening quick enough, so I'm going to change tact, I'm going to change course, and sadly and unfortunately, you actually make things worse because by tweaking your strategy, things will alter, your results will change as well. So we have to be careful that we're not just trying to rush something which can't be rushed. You can't get your ex back instantaneously. Certainly, most of you do not fall into that category. And if you do, if you are in that 0.0001%, well, I would suggest, but did you really even go for a breakup or was it just a disagreement that you managed to sort out? You're not likely to get your ex back instantly. You're not likely to get your ex back anytime soon. The average amount of time that I see that someone can reconnect with an ex is around six months as an average. Some of you will be sooner. Some of you will be later. Some of you will be very quick. Some of you will sadly never get your ex back again. But if we look at the average, it is around six months. That is the average amount of time that I see. And that is with your ex dumper reaching out to you and reconnection taking place from there. So as you can see from that perspective, it is likely to be a bit longer than six months because it's not going to just be an instantaneous reconnection. There is going to be somewhat getting to know each other again, going on a few dates. You can see what I'm saying here. So even if you think things aren't going quick enough for you, it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing the wrong thing, but it does depend on what you are doing. Now, let me just give you one example right now about how you could tweak your strategy to develop this concept of different strategy, different results. Let's just say, for instance, that you know that your ex dumper is going to be in a certain place at a certain time. You know they go shopping at the same time each week in the same place. And maybe previously, you've always thought to yourself, well, I'm going to turn up at that location and I'm going to try and grab a word with my ex. I'm going to try and show them that I am a better person than they remember. 
I'm going to try and showcase all of these traits. And maybe in the last month or so, each week you have been there and you've been trying to show yourself as looking better physically. You're trying to have conversation and you think, well, my expert dumper is engaging with me. They're saying hi. They're having a few words. This is good. I'm starting to change what they think of me. But unfortunately, they are not wanting to reconnect right now. So I don't know what I can do. Maybe I need to be trying to find other places I can bump into them. Well, I would say, actually, you need to be making sure that you don't go shopping when you know your ex will be there. Because even though you believe you're showcasing positive change, I would suggest, if anything, this is probably annoying your ex. Because they likely know that you are doing this deliberately. They likely know that this isn't coincidence and they can see through your plan. Now, yes, they might have noticed you look physically better than you once did. Yes, they might notice from your brief conversations that there are certain things which you've changed and improved. But now, now you need to give them the power and the gift of your absence. I call it that because you need them to miss you. If they don't miss you, they will never want to be with you. They can't miss you if you're always in their life. Even if you're not texting them every day, even if you're not living with them every day, if you are bumping into them shopping once a week, they are not going to miss you. They know you're going to be there next week. They're not going to be wondering what you're doing because you're likely telling them. So now you need to, in this instance, if this did somehow fit with your situation, I would suggest stop going to where you know your ex is going to be. Stop bumping into them. You've done it multiple times. They've seen some level of improvement. Now it's time to change tact. Now it's time to try a different strategy to get different results. We now need to pull away. We now need them to feel your absence. We now need them to think about you, wonder about you, and to miss you. So there is a very quick example, which may or may not fit into your specifics, about how a different strategy can get different results. Now, if you would like advice and support about how to try and increase the chance of one day getting your ex back, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service where me and you can speak one-on-one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website, www.dateme.tips for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate via my audio coaching service. Talking about your feelings can also improve your mental health. It helps prevent the buildup of negative emotions, which can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, and even physical health issues. Speak your heart to free your mind. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast. If you feel that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description. And point number three is you are what you believe. So if you truly get to the point where you believe your version 2.0 of yourself, then you will be more attractive and appealing to a larger group of people than you were when you first attracted your ex. I like to use the analogy of imagining that you are casting off an attraction net out to sea. You're casting off that net. And when you were version 1, the original version of yourself, you put that net out to sea and you caught within it your ex. You know, your ex deemed you as attractive, your ex deemed you as interesting, appealing, your ex wanted to be with you. They were within that net. Now, they were probably right of the upper limits of where that net could catch someone who was interested in you. There would have been different people much closer than your ex, much more within that net. But you declined. You didn't want them. You didn't think they were good enough. You wanted to find the best possible person for you. And that was your ex. You just managed to get them with your attraction net as you cast it out to sea. That was version one of yourself. Now, the problem is this net wasn't all that big. And there were plenty of people far beyond the reach of that net. Now, if you become a version 2.0 of yourself, becoming a better person today than you were yesterday, and a better person tomorrow than you are currently today, you'll become version 2.0. You will have a larger attraction net. And when you cast that out to sea, not only will your ex still be within it, but they will no longer be right at the edge. They will actually be the other side. They'll be well within the net. They will be easily caught up 
and the attraction may feel towards you. But now there will be people who previously couldn't have been caught within the net, but now that it is a larger version 2.0 net, they are now within the limits. But they are beyond your ex. People who previously you couldn't attract, you now can. People who are more physically, mentally, spiritually attractive than your ex are now within your reach of attraction. So what do we see here? We see that if you've got to version 2.0 of yourself, then you will be attractive and appealing to a larger group of people, including your ex. So when we're talking about in today's podcast, that you might not believe, but the reality is, but it is possible for your dumper, somebody who ended your relationship, could one day be chasing you. We can see how possible this is, because you could be attracting people, quote unquote, better than your ex. And if you can attract them, then what does that mean for your ex? It doesn't mean that even though they're your dumper, they won't notice. Of course they will notice. So if you can attract better people than your ex, your ex the dumper is very likely to feel interested in you once more. Now, obviously, there are things within your situation which might affect this depending on how you treated your ex, etc. But if we're talking on a purely attraction basis, physically, mentally, spiritually, whether this is how you physically look, whether this is your lack of ambition, which now needs to alter, whether this is your confidence, your posture, whatever it may be, if things are going to be based around those concepts, then you absolutely can get to a stage where lots of people who are seemingly better than your ex want to be with you and your ex dumper will definitely see you as an attractive option. And if they are the reasons why you were dumped, there is every reason to believe that your ex dumper could be chasing you soon.